Bitcoin to 50,000 by next year? Are you crazy? Well, maybe not. In this video, I'm gonna break down and show you how the scarcity of Bitcoin is driving the value and how the happening that's coming up next year could push the price that high. So stay tuned. All right, welcome back. So if you're new to the channel on Thursdays, we talk about Bitcoin, cryptocurrency, investing. On Tuesdays, we talk about before you invest success in business so you can make more money, so you can invest more money. Now today we are talking about Bitcoin. We are talking about how it can get to $50,000 by next year. I have some charts, I have some stats, I have some numbers, and it's gonna be awesome. Now stay tuned till the end because I have a free report and I'm giving away free Bitcoin. I'm doing this to push education, awareness, and adoption. Help me out. Stick around to the end. Now let's get into it. All right. So Bitcoin going to $50,000 by next year. What, is, what the heck? I mean, does that even make any sense? Well, let's talk about it. So I learned when I was a kid that, some, that value is driven by supply and demand. That's it, right? Supply and demand. So um, there's something called the scarcity principle. And basically that, you know, the, the more scarce an asset is, um, the more value that can be driven. Now, of course, only if somebody wants it, which is why it's supply and demand. So as you can see by this chart up here, if you have a supply and you have demand, the, the increase on demand with the lower level of supply is always gonna drive the price up. There's more people that want the scarce asset. It makes sense, it's super easy. Now people, t people try to overcomplicate all kinds of numbers and I find that they're often really simple to understand, supply and demand, valuation, et cetera. So scarcity is something that's not easy to get. Um, it's something that is unforgeable um, costliness. So it's very expensive, if not impossible to make or, or reproduce. So things like an antiques, you know, you can't reproduce an antique, uh, precious metals, you can't really reproduce that either, and things like that. Um, now, Bitcoin gives us something called digital scarcity. All right, so you typically with something digital, you can make a copy. I can make a copy of the CD or a copy of the movie. Now, of course, the movie and the music business do not like that they put all types of encryption and protection to prevent you from doing that it still hasn't really stopped it because people can just make copies of something digital however bitcoin solved that bitcoin solved this this digital scarcity model where they basically came up with a way that it cannot be duplicated i'm not going to get into all that if you want to know more about that leave me a comment down below but just trust me when i tell you that it cannot be duplicated because bitcoin solved this you have to have electricity as well um, to run the mining equipment in order to produce the bitcoins so they can't be produced for free there's a true cost of capital to produce it just like gold if i want to get gold out of the ground it costs me money i have to buy land i have to buy equipment i have to go mine it i have to process it there's a true cost of capital to produce gold and there's a true cost of capital to produce this digital scarce asset of Bitcoin. All right. Now, when we look at scarce assets, such as a limited edition collector's item or gold or something like that, it's, uh, we need to understand something called a stock to flow ratio. All right. So the stock to flow ratio is the stock, the amount of existing uh, available inventory or how much gold is available or how many paintings there are that's the stock and then what's the flow how much new is being created that would be the inflation all right so we want to understand what that ratio is and if we look at you know precious metals gold copper zinc brass etc gold has the lowest stock to flow ratio of any of those metals which is why gold is the most valuable i mean it has a very low rate of supply of new supply versus the amount of stock that's already existing. If you have a really high, then it's gonna bring the price down because it's inflation. It doesn't affect the supply and demand. Now you have more supply than you have demand, right? And so anyway, gold has the lowest supply, which is why it's the most valuable out of those, uh, out of those metals. Now in 2017, the Bitcoin um, stock to flow ratio was was good, but not anywhere near gold. We had about 25 times the amount of supply versus the amount of flow. However, by 2025, Bitcoin is set to overtake gold and actually be more scarce from the supply and stock valuations. 
the stock to flow numbers, if we, if we take a look at the stock to flow numbers of Bitcoin versus gold versus other metals, et cetera, what we want to do is we want to look at the, the, the supply growth. Like I said, that's the inflation, right? The, fl the stock to flow. So one way that we can do it is we take um, the amount of gold, let's just say, and we'd say how many years of new supply would it take to replace the amount of existing stock? And with gold, we come up with 62, so FS62. With silver, we have 22. Uh, with palladium, platinum, uh, et cetera, we have less than one. All right, so that's just kind of, so gold 62, silver 22, all the other metals are less than one. Bitcoin comes in at 25, so right about silver, just a little bit more than silver, there's about 17.5 million coins, and there's about 0.7 million coins per year coming back into the mix. And so we come up with a number of 25. Now, the way that we use this is the stock to flow drives the value. So you take scarcity, measured it by the stock to flow. I mean, how else can you measure it? So you take the stock to flow, the amount of stock versus the new flow, and then you divide it and you get this, this stock to flow number. And like I said, the, the metals the metals are our most reliable numbers because they've been around for thousands of years and that's what we're looking at. Uh, we've taken that, now when I say we, not me, um, I've taken this study from uh, 100 trillion USD. I'm gonna put a full link to his research and report down below. He's amazing and you should follow him on Twitter. If you're, if you're on Twitter, definitely follow him. I'll put a link down below. And if you're on Twitter, follow me as well, at number one Mark Moss. Leave me a tweet. I'd love to talk to each one of you. So this 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 chart is from him. He's done the full research on this, um, and he's basically built a model where he's plotted the stock to flow ratio versus the, the market value. So he this chart shows you right here that as the stock to flow ratio goes up, the market value is also being driven up as well. And it's kept this relationship of value and stock to flow all the way back since Bitcoin started when he basically had taken the prices when 10,000 Bitcoin bought the pizzas all the way through today. And he's also plotted gold and silver on here. And you can see that gold and silver are lining up almost exactly with Bitcoin when you look at the stock to flow ratio and the valuations. And so as it becomes less rare or, or more rare, the valuation goes up. Now we saw at the peak of Bitcoin back in 2017, at the peak, Bitcoin was at SF22 and it had a 230 billion uh, market cap, which is about like silver. So the valuation, the market cap valuation, and the stock to flow ratio, 22 years, were about the same. And so these numbers are lining up uh, uh, pretty well, right? And so um, as it continues to go up, as it continues to be more scarce, it's going to continue to pour, pull more and more value. Um, it should pull more demand. And where will it pull it from? Well, it's gonna pull it from other metals. People that own silver, people that own gold are wanna, gonna wanna start to diversify and pick up some Bitcoin. Maybe you have uh, money you know, out of the country. Maybe you're in a country that has negative interest rates. So that means that they're actually charging you to borrow your money. So maybe you're getting negative interest rates and you wanna put into something else. Maybe you live in a country like Venezuela or Zimbabwe with a predatory government, you're afraid could seize it and it's gonna start to put money in there. We'll see you know, rich people, billionaires, millionaires starting to hedge their bets putting it in there we'll see institutional investors starting to get um, exposure to bitcoin and so as it starts pulling it's like gravity it's going to start pulling value from all these other assets because of this scarcity all right now we have next year we have the halving and basically what that's going to do is that's going to change the stock to flow ratio from about 22 to about 50 all right, so it's gonna almost be up where Bitcoin is, which is incredible. And so when it goes up next year, it halves in half, the inflation schedule gets cut in half, we'll get an SF of about 50, and it could push the valuation up to a trillion dollars, which puts one Bitcoin up to about $55,000. Now, this model isn't exact, it isn't perfect, it doesn't have exact dates. We can see that happen within one to two years of the halving, so it might take a little bit more time than just the halving, um, but somewhere around that, based off of this model that goes back since the beginning of Bitcoin, it's been accurate, we could see the halving cause Bitcoin to go up to 55,000 per coin or a one trillion market cap. Now, there's no guarantees, it may not happen, but it could. It's, like I said, it's been, it, it had a very good track record over the last 10 years, 
And based off of gold and silver, which are non-correlated or other assets, it's been following that as well. And so this is just one of many metrics that, that we look at, all right? So we don't take this all by itself, but we look at this, we look at all other types of off-chain analytics and other analytics, and, and we measure it. If you wanna know more about other indicators that I look at like this, leave me comments down below, we'll break into that. Um, but I think this is compelling evidence to say you should have at least a little bit of exposure. Now, I'm not talking about betting the farm or putting all your money or your retirement money in there, but why not have two or 3% of your investments into Bitcoin or maybe even 5%? Take 5% of your total investable assets and just put it into Bitcoin, just a tiny, small amount. The upside is worth it. Uh, you're balancing out for the risk that you're taking. And I think you should be getting off zero if you're not already. Now. I, I'm doing this because I want to push adoption and awareness and I want to push education. And so I'm doing my part to do this. You can help me by sharing these videos with you think someone else that can help it uh, use them. However, I'm doing another thing and I'm giving away Bitcoin. Hopefully you're still watching. So I want to give you some Bitcoin. And what I'm going to do is I partnered up with a company called Dropbit. And everybody says that uh, Bitcoin is too hard to use. And they say that until the user interface gets better, um, no one's going to use it. Well, a company named Dropbit has made an app and it's made it just as easy to send Bitcoin as it is to send Venmo. So I could send you Bitcoin to your Twitter, to your Facebook, to your email, to your text message, whatever. And I am going to give away Bitcoin for free using Dropbit app. So here's what we're going to do. Links are down below. I made a report and I'm talking about all these different stores of value and how Bitcoin is going to pull value out, how it gets to a hundred trillion market cap by pulling from gold and precious metals and overseas bank accounts, etc. All right, I'm giving the report away for free. Download the Drop It app for free. Click on your name at the top. It's going to give you a custom Drop It address. It says Drop It slash and a number. Take that number, go to the link down below to download the report and put that your custom drop it address in there download the report for free read it enjoy it share it please um, and i'm going to pull two people to give 25 dollars in bitcoin each to your drop it app so drop me that download the drop it app for free download the report for free give me your drop it unique address and i will send two people out bitcoin for free all right um, if you like the video, give me some thumbs up. If you don't like it, give me some thumbs down. Either way, let me know. Leave me your comments down below. I love to have conversations with every single one of you in the comments, as I'm sure you're already aware. And that's it to your success. I'm out.